to the Concoction Podcast, where we talk about everything and anything. Chris, how you doing, buddy? Good, good, man. How are you? Very good, my man. Good. What's going on today? We got a special guest, man. Um, my friend here, uh, Jim Norris from the Information the Mutiny Information Cafe. That's right. Yeah. Thanks Welcome. For, thanks for the invite. Thanks for, for the sure. invite. Not Welcome that. aboard. Thanks for coming. Uh, well, I guess we start with uh, tell tell us a little bit about the uh, the history of your business. And well, it's a long one to get to where it is, but yet to understand it all, you got I got to tell the, the longer part of it. But I used to be in the music business. I worked for a local promotions company that ran the Bluebird Theater and the Ogden Theater and the Gothic. So I worked for those guys for about a decade. <clears throat> and through that, I got to know a lot of the local music guys and music scene and stuff like that. So from there, when I left that company, I, you know, well, it was time to go, which they encouraged it was time to go for me. <laughs> so <laughs> That's a nice, right, nice way. Uh, two, I took two of my assistant managers, and we uh, opened a bar called Three Kings Tavern, which is just down the street. Oh, from yeah, yeah. Are, yeah. I remember, yeah. There's some so, good metal shows yeah, there. Great metal shows there. Yeah. That's kind of the thing. It was punk, metal, and country it was when I was there. So uh, uh, did that for a decade with those guys, and then I uh, had a chance to open up you know, the bookstore. I'd, when I'd go do my bank runs, I'd walk by that bookstore two or three times a week. And the old owner, Jack Jensen, is an amazing, amazing man. He was one of the first punkers in Denver. When there was five nice. punkers, he was one of them. <laughs> and then he ran stores that sold punk rock goods. He uh, did, was part of the pirate, pirate gallery system, which was the first underground, lowbrow kind of art gallery system in Denver. So that's up on the west side. So that was the first place. When I came to Denver, that was the first place you'd go see like a weird art show. There was no Santa Fe Art Walk or none gotcha. of that. You'd go up to the west side and you'd go to, like to, to the three galleries that were there that did it. And the Bug Theater, that's up there too. So there would be some shows at that. So Jack was part of that pirate, pirate gallery system, which was artist-driven and things like that. And then he left to form Mutiny, which is, uh, he called it Mutiny Now. And then, uh, and that's who we ended up buying it from was Jack, you know. So after walking by the store, I got a good relationship with Jack. And then when it was time for him to sell it, you know, he offered it to me. And I said, well, I'll, I have no money, you know. We'll, we'll, fi <laughs> we'll figure out something. So, uh, you know, he, ma he made it work. Nice. That's yeah. sweet. So that's how we got to that. You know, there's a lot of details and stuff in there. I get distracted, but. <laughs> I got you. I, um... But for, 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 to do what we do at the bookstore, you know, we do the live music. I have all those weird things going on at once. And it's because of my years with the music business and the bar business and being on the block so long. I didn't just could pop it up. And my partner, Matt, you know, you know, we've known each other a long time. We got our start doing zines way back when, 25 years ago. Gotcha. So, you know, we just kind of waited for this kind of opportunity. And then when it came up, it was great. And after I did it for a couple of years doing both jobs, I did the Three Kings and Mutiny. And, uh, you know, once again, the powers that be decided I should not be part of something. <laughs> Slowly pushed it. Right, you. right. Yeah. But it was it was the right thing. You know, I was tired of being there and tired of being around, you know, one of the guys and uh, really put my heart and energy in, you know, the, uh, into the bookstore. And it's turned into a more positive thing. You know, I still get to do, I get to be around the music. Uh, the loudest things I've ever seen have been at my coffee shop. <laughs> like stuff Sweet. that like, you know, make you fall off a chair it's so loud. <laughs> I've had yeah. Thou there twice had a bunch of great bands there well let, let, let me stop you right there yeah. so very quick sorry let's tell people who might listen to this episode what exactly do you do what's the business all right yeah let's total. do that mm -hmm. i guess before i get involved <laughs> right so that way but, they know what you're talking about yeah, you're being right. the loudest thing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all right well, this is the beginning three two one all right, <laughs> all right this is, i'm jim norris and it's mutiny information cafe and basically what it is it's a used bookstore coffee shop comic book store record store and then a uh, uh, community space, live music venue. I have a huge PA system, uh, lights, subs. I stay. I open early. I stay open late. I don't serve booze, but uh, we serve lots of coffee. So it's oh, I have tons of pinball machines. I'm way into pinball. We had seven pinball game pinball machines there. So it's kind of a great all ages space for everyone. You know, we're right. extremely. I mean, I'm I militant about how about. You know, the freedom of expression and the freedom of what you want to do in life. And I will beat somebody down if they come into my store and try to say otherwise. You know? Right. Sweet. So, I mean, that's been a, it's just, it's a safe spot, you know, for kids. You know, I have a, I have an adult son and I have a new baby and my, uh, my partner, Matt, has a teenage daughter. You know, we want to be able to have that, that there's safe spots that have creative things. And we can use, you know, we, we, we carry lots of local music, local authors, 
you know, I don't have a lot of romance novels or bullshit books. So <laughs> you come down, it's like, Nobody has time for that. Oh, You're promoting the good shit. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, we can affect a generation by you know, slipping <laughs> them the right books and the right games to play and the right comic books to read. That's right. Okay. So seeing the results of that, you know, it's been really exciting and invigorating, you know. So, Any genres? Any specific genres that you prefer to have well, in your shop? You know, oh, well, you know, well, we're into the, I mean, for art, I like lowbrow stuff, you know, hot rods, pinups, stuff like that. Nice. And then books, you know, we're deep, we're, I mean, we, we like the beat writers a lot, but there's just so much more out there that we're just rediscovering. You know, people turning us on, the books from, uh, you know, uh, foreign writers, female writers. I mean, it's a lot of stuff that we're getting. It's like, it's a new, it's a great chance to rediscover. Literature. You know, literature yeah. again. Yeah, I have a writing and English degree, you know, so. All the stuff I was pushed was, you know, straight white male, unless you went out of your way <laughs> to find, you know, take a class that was female lit or, uh, you know, people of color lit, things like that. So we're trying to expand that book, you know, the nice. bookstore into that kind of stuff. Very nice. Yep. That's really cool, man. I noticed uh, he's not lying, man, about about the noise and stuff. I went in there just maybe a day or two ago and there was like a band of girls, right, with pizza and yep. they were doing a play and yep. it, it was pretty loud, but it looked really fun. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. What kind of music do you have in there? Well, I pretty much do anything, you know. So, like, well, the, in the past week, I had noise bands play. And the noise bands, I don't know if you've ever sat through a noise band show. But I've done it hundreds of times now that we've <laughs> opened the coffee shop. And this, the band that played, they were great at what they do. But it's just, it's, it's exactly what you think. It's excruciating, <laughs> loud noise. And I think it's a battle between performer and audience to see who breaks first. You know? Right. Who, who walks out the door first? Right. Who, well, yeah, who's just, who can't take it anymore and screams and runs out the door. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah, there's been a few shows like that. You know, mm -hmm. So there's the noise stuff. I, I, I personally am a big punk rock kid. You know, I grew up punk rock. Very I love nice. Three Chords and the Truth. You know, that's my favorite deal. But uh, I get to hear a lot of stuff. And lately, you know, Denver's got an incredible metal scene, lots of doom, lots of stoner rock. Yeah. So even, you know, grindcore is a tough one to stand out in, and there's some great grindcore bands in Denver. <laughs> nice. Which ties in with the noise bands, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, I've got you know, and that's a, that's the same thing. The the type of records that you sell there, or yep, yep, the vinyl yep, records, right? Yep. Yeah, and the records records we mostly do used. So it's whatever kind of collections we can come across, and those tend to be a lot of the seventies and eighties stuff right now. Very nice. You know, there's some good fifties and sixties stuff that comes through, but you know, the kids are buying the Eagles and stuff like that. Right. So, but for local stuff, I carry everything. Like if you're looking for local vinyl. I've got the yeah. heaviest stuff, yeah, and, I know, nice. and I know the dudes that did it, and they've played there, you know. So, right. do you trade? Do you trade? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We, we definitely like, uh, yeah, we like trade. Sweet, because nice. there's something that uh, I do have another podcast is in Spanish. It's called Nuclear Rocket, where we promote local artists. Oh yeah, yeah, and we always look in ways, you know, to promote bands yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and help them out. You know, yeah, yeah, that's what and, it's all about. Yeah, and the reason I do it in Spanish because it's that's another, you know target of fans and people they it's one third of the world you speaks yeah. English, you know? so we always trying to like find a ways to help bands especially local bands because there's a lot of artists here and yeah. a lot of good bands you know absolutely good quality bands yeah they needs to be promoted and sometimes just because they don't have enough money <laughs> right a lot of stuff i've discovered too with bands is you know just finding the path is easy to get to where you want to be you just need to work really hard to get there. And right. a lot of people just don't know to ask, you know, and like with the, the way I've done booking, when I used to do the three Kings and the way I do it now is number one, I take care of the person that comes down to talk to me about booking a show. That's Sweet. first and foremost, the person that I'm dealing with in front of me, they one had the courage to come down and talk they made to me. The effort. Right. And rarely does a person who doesn't know how to play their instruments or have enough confidence in music come down and approach somebody face to face. Right. And if they do, you know, they're nuts. You know, but then, but, but then you can work with that too. You know, they might end up being that flaky nuts that ends up doing really well. You know, so when I book shows, even with the Kings and now, people are surprised about how easy it is just to come down and go, well, what do you do? What's your deal? Is there no racism or misogyny or hate in it? Fair you enough. Know, and then when those questions are answered, it's like, all right, well, let's come up with a date. Let's figure it out. You know, there's no pressure there. It's not like you make or break if nobody shows up at the at the bookstore, <laughs> at, at the coffee shop to see yeah. you. You know, it's still, disp you know, to the audience, you have to see it to under to believe it. It's more like everybody has a preconceived notion of what a bookstore right. or a record store or a coffee shop, all these things are. But this place is, 
it's different, you know. So, and, yeah. and Jim, uh, Jim's telling the truth, man. I, yeah. The way I approached him about this podcast was literally that. Like, I'll go in and their shop is so cool. Like, it's got older stuff. It's got different kinds of books, different kinds of comics. I literally, I, I'll order some food from the food trucks right outside their place. I'll come in. I'll look at some stuff. I'll get a coffee, and I told him, "Hey, man, we got a podcast. Would you be interested?" Not even a minute. He was like, "Yeah, let me, <laughs> let me know Sweet. when." Yeah. yeah, and it's as we've began to learn, it's not that easy. Not that easy to get a guest, man. And no. and you were actually really cool about that. Well, yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm known for my ego, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> any way to just any way to dispense some some knowledge, you know. Right. But it should be easy, you know. And watching and, and with bands and art, I, I do the same with artists and comic book artists and writers the same the same way. You, if you come in and you've pr had your book printed out. Right. You know, and you've put, I mean, I know what it takes to do a book. You know, like I said, I've got a writing degree. I know what that takes. So if you have the guts to come up and go, here is my diary. Right. You know, I want, here's a copy for you to read. And I, I'd love to sell your book here. And I'm like, nice. you know, how can you sit and look at somebody in the eye and go, nope, yeah. <laughs> not interested in your dreams. <laughs> get this get dream out of here. Yeah. You know, music's a different story yeah. because I have been in the music business so long. I don't book open mics. I uh, I have a you know I I book three four months out because I know so many bands and people that are that I've known for the last twenty years have come down and play amazing sets and small stuff. I mean it's nice. it's a great place to see out in, incredibly talented musicians. Very nice. And the noise things these are incredibly they know what they're doing. That's the whole thing is that they can play a song twice. You know it's, <laughs> they're not just screaming at you and doing right. stuff. They're touring and people are showing up to see them play. Very nice. You know, that song, you know, song one off nice. whatever your noise cassette's called, you know. So like in your comic department, I've noticed um just just a quick look, I've noticed some local uh some local comics. Um how do you treat that? What's the best local comic you've had? Or do you treat that the same? Like a local comic artist could say, hey, here's my book. It's yep. really cool. Do you treat that opportunity the same way? Yep, I do. I work a lot with the comic book industry or with the local local cart uh, comic guys. I helped. Uh, I was one of the founders of the Dink, uh, Dink Convention, which is an inter uh, underground art and zine convention. Just finished right. up last weekend. Really cool stuff. So... It's the same with that, you know, and watching these guys grow. And there's one guy in particular, Dan Crozier, he would be great on your show. He's an amazing artist. Nice. He, uh, I talked to him years ago when I had the idea about opening a, a, a bookstore, a comic book shop. Okay. I had, I, you know, I was owned a couple other bars at the time and was nice. you know, looking for some other way to get out of the booze <laughs> business. And uh, asked him, and he introduced me to, you know, Alan Brooks. He introduced me to uh, Lonnie Allen. And these are all amazing, amazing local writers that are winning gotcha. awards and blowing up with, with the comic books. And it's just, you know, same deal. If you show up with me with your pre-done stuff. Nice. And we also do a, a, a market every Saturday and Sunday outside the venue along the mural. Hmm. And I invite people that, you know, if you want to come sell art and things like that, you know, come down. Show your art there on a Saturday. Get to know me. Get to know us. Nice. Get to know my attitude because I, I I can be I can be a little coarse. <laughs> so. And I and I guess it's like I, sometimes I don't get why people won't do the same thing. You know, it's like at the end of the day, we all benefit out of this. Right. You know, and that's like, the way I see it. Yeah, yeah. we all help in each other. So right, right. Like if, if you sell, I sell. More people know me, so it's like a it's like a a web you know like it's a community we all, we're yeah. literally the denver or colorado community man yeah and it is so hard sometimes for like especially like talking more like from the music uh there's a lot of ego involved yeah. in the music business from promoters and agents and club owners and bar owners even their own bands sometimes oh yeah <laughs> well yeah i mean that, but that's what you're paying for right yeah. you're paying for that guy that's got enough nuts to go up there and go yeah. oh, you know? get louder right yeah. right so I'm, uh, but the music business is a tough one. It's a tough it's one. A tough. It's still run by a lot of old white men, man. You know, <laughs> and, that, and that attitude is nuts. You know, the, the ego is crazy. And the people with the least amount of talent, the least amount of talent, are making the most amount of money. Oh, yeah. Same as the movie industry yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't, I don't mean to go behind the scenes, man. But I did read up on you a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. I, I caught up on a Westward article about you guys. So. You've thrown a couple words out today, or maybe one in particular, zine. Yep. Like, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't even know what that means, but you mentioned you and your partner had a zine thing going. Yep. And I also, interestingly enough, read that, would you jump on trains? Would yeah, you ride yeah. trains? Yeah, we, I hopped trains for a while. Yeah. You hopped trains, hopped man. Trains. Wow. Did, me and my partner, Matt, we went on a trip together, too. 
It was awesome. And then a zine, what, what exactly? Zines, basically, it's just independently published. You know, it's generally intensely personal kind of stuff or co uh, compilations of different things, compendiums. So basically, you know, when Matt and I started, we, ours was, I, I had my English and writing degree, and I had gotten four or five rejection letters from legitimate <laughs> press. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, dude. Right. You know, I know this is good stuff, just because just because you don't want to show it in the Carolina Review or whatever. You right, know? right. I'll just, I know how to work a copy machine. <laughs> <laughs> show it right in your face. And I had artist friends, and I had other friends that we all felt the same way. So... Basically, a zine is like, you know, it's your own publishing. So you just make your own stuff. So it could be a small one that fits in your pocket, eight and a half by 11 fold and a half, you know, whatever. It's like a home magazine. Homemade, like a homemade, homemade magazine. Homemade magazine. Yep, okay, yep. gotcha. So there's always limited run, always lots of blood, sweat, and tears in them, and the most heart ever. You know, Very so nice. How's, yeah, how's that going? Like uh, when it comes to the response from people, is they're very reacting good? Oh, yeah, or? it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You can see, I mean, you can see the influence like that with the zine thing. It's watching the zine convention grow. So from having only a few of these small self-published zines in the shop that, you know, some were from my collection, some we just get, to now, you know, after it's over, I get guys from all over. A bunch of guys from Mexico came up and brought some Spanish language zines. I bought those. Very nice. I had a guy bring up a suitcase of crazy, awesome Colombian zines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go, Colombian. Yeah. Yeah. And they were in the house. <laughs> yep, it was awesome. It was really, really cool stuff. My friend is down there working with some art collective. So really high quality, but really incredibly offensive. Uh, you know, <laughs> Self-published comic books and zines, you know. Do you, uh, do you draw? Do you, are you a comic maker? I am maker? an encourager. I encourage. That's what I do best. I've the tried number to one be, fan. I've tried to be in bands. I have no rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> I try to draw, but both my hands are left. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, yeah. very nice. And, you know, my talent has been, as I discovered it, you know, when I used to work at the Bluebird and the Ogden, you know, it was like, it's people. I know I, I, I can do well with people. And uh, the people that I've had to manage and run and deal with over the years are... You know, traditionally, you know, irresponsible, crazy people, you know, so musicians gotcha. and artists, and those are the people that I deal with, and I, I excel with having people, those like people work for me, you know, they can yeah. come and be a barista or a bartender or a security guy, and, you know, building a community at work, and then, you know, with shows, concerts in particular, how you're treated is huge. Right. You know, and when I took over management at the Bluebird, the girl in the box office, you know, was a, was an evil... You know, just like a jerk right the first person you deal with when to buy your ticket and you know people can't hear people don't know what's going on you know not everybody goes to 700 shows a year like right either, right you know? so most people go to four or five concerts a year and that's it so the first person you deal with is an evil wench and then the guy at the door is a dick to you, you know, the guy <laughs> patting you down and you're clearly you know you're going into a you have shorts on you right, like, you got nothing to hide you know and the scrutiny then you go to the bartender and the bartender's better than you because you know, everybody's met the bartender that's better than you, yeah. you know? And then, in the meantime, you know, the sound guys have been rude to the band all day, blah, blah, blah. So you end up with this giant circle. I mean, the, the show's not going to be great. Right. You know, when everybody, right. you know. When, so when I took over, I fired the, <laughs> nice. I, I fired, I fired out the, out the box office person. I fired the security staff and got nice young guys that would just talk to you. Right. You know, not guys that want to choke you out. <laughs> you know, make, and then it, say that, you know, tell the sound guy that you better be good to the local band. You better make their fucking sound good because that's the guy that serves me pizza. Right. And that's the guy that works on my car. And that's right. the singer is the exactly. girl that babysits my kid, you know? Exactly. So don't ever talk down to the local band ever because those are the guys you deal with. Bands, you know, at you know, Bluebird and Ogden level, you see a lot of guys on their way up, you know? Right. 400 right. cap venue, 500 cap, they're on the way to the moon. They're raw talent. But, you know, five years later, after a second failure record, they'd be <laughs> on their way back down. <laughs> and the guys that were dicks on the way up, man, they're, you know, they're not getting... They're not getting People remember anywhere. that stuff. You know? right. People that stay in the business longer, they don't have any... Right. You know, they're not musicians. They're, exactly. they're production guys. Yeah. So you change that attitude, and then it then becomes like, you know, everybody feels involved because they know it makes the show special. So the manager shows up early and makes sure the band has all their water and sodas and beers, and there are no green M&Ms backstage. <laughs> so when the band shows up, boom, everything's ready. The sound guy's all friendly. Right. You know? All fresh. And, and why not? You know, why not give it because like it's a fun. little bit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah give it a, it's, rock, it's music. Especially music. for local musicians, yeah. you know, like give it like a good experience. Experience, you know, it kind of 
helping me out the helping me out to feel like you know it can get better you yes, know and yes. it, it, there's nice people out there because music industry is just there's so true it's full of it's sharks right, full it's of, really oh, right there's so many dicks up there like yeah. i know bands like i come here to denver to play shows and the, the promoters would just gone after right. the show right. and they don't have no not even money to stay in hotels right. or like to go back to their places right. so the promoter walked out with, you know, with i mean that's yeah yeah they sell the tickets and they're just gone you know with their money and then like why you know if you had a chance and they don't have to be a lot you know like you're right. saying just put clean room yeah, like a <laughs> fucking couch a, a towel and water somewhere to sit. <laughs> yeah. that's why at, at, at the mutiny sometimes we'll charge for shows but mostly it's a donation based deal. Gotcha. So like I'll you know, you know, on some of the bigger, heavier metal shows, there'll be a guy at the door encouraging you to donate. Right. You know? With the strong arm. Well, you know. Put, put, just, put a dollar you know, in there. With a weapon in their hand. Like, right. How much? Right. <laughs> you know, so that or pass the hat. And through that, I've got to book bands and see bands. Other promoters have booked bands there that are walking out the door on tour with three, four, five hundred dollars, you know, split between, you know, each band gets that much money. Right. There's enough kids show up and all kick in and realize the value of what they're doing, you know. And they'll come back. They'll right. keep coming yeah. back. Right. Yeah. You know, so I'd rather have the bands get taken care of because all I want to sell is coffee and comic books and records and books. You know, the rest That's of right. the stuff is awesome. Looking just to uh see. Spe speaking of which, man, I was I was reading up when we're we're trying to find some some guests here. I was finding some um, some comics, some the comedy scene of Denver, and I was looking to maybe get a comedian in here. Yeah, and yeah. your shop and your name came up a lot. Yeah, man. Well, you, that's, you, that's they, they have a lot of comedians, man, in in the same shop. So I do, I do a ton of a lot with comedy. So how did how was that connection, or how did well, you that get one into started? Comedy? I owned a bar on I owned. I owned a bar up on the north side of Denver called, uh, or it was north side of downtown Denver called the Rockaway Tavern. And it was like, it was a weird time. I was going through divorce, and blah, <laughs> blah, blah. And I, I was sober back then too. But I uh, went into business with this guy that was, a uh, well, you know, everyone told me that he was nuts. You know? <laughs> Everybody told me that he probably had some drug problems and stuff like that. You had the warnings. I had the warnings. I mean, I mean it was my deal. But... The venue was great, and it was like it, the potential was going to be really cool. And I thought, really, I th really thought I could show this guy a cool way to have fun and not do meth. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, that, you that, just that, 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 that was my first taste of realizing that addiction is t a horrible thing. It's like, all right, well, it's, it's beyond. Yeah. All right. So I was trying left and right to try to book good stuff in there. We were trying, but you know, it was hard when all the money kept going out the door. But the one thing that happened was these comedians approached me and uh, they asked me about if they could do something in the back. We had a cool patio. And I'm like, all right, cool, you know, whatever. Right. I just want anybody in here to drink. And got to know these guys and, and how, how awesome that it was that the open mic comedy wasn't like this terrible New York style thing where there's guys yelling at you, hey, you suck, you dick. You know, it's, <laughs> there wasn't that. You know, it was a lot of encouraging and it was a community. So I went around and checked out all the, the open mic comedies in Denver with the Squire and all those guys and introduced myself and met them. And then uh, at the Kings, I booked the Friday night deal. That was my test, you know, the Friday afternoon uh, comedy that's still going on there. So comedy, you know, I, so I get to know all these guys doing all that. So open up the shop, you know, it's like, well, why not? You know, right. do the same deal with these guys here in an alcohol-free environment. And... Uh, Keep the jerks out, right? Keep yeah, the then you get a lot less yeah. of that stuff, you know. So it becomes even like that. I, I know that word keeps coming back, but that community where it's a whole bunch of people shows up that, to support each other every week, mm -hmm. you know. So I mean, those guys, and you know, if if you're partying and want to have fun in life, you know, who do you want to hang out with? You know, a room full of fucking comedians. You know, that's right. the best people in the world. Right. To hang yeah, out exactly. With. Generally, they're educated. Generally, they're extremely liberal. Almost, uh, you know, extremely <laughs> left. You know, and, you know, and and they love to party on yes. any level, you know. <laughs> so those are my favorite people to hang out with. Yeah. You know? Let me ask you something about uh, the freedom of speech. You say that you're a big, you know, on freedom of speech. And, and based on what's going on right now in the country, there's a lot of, you know, from both sides, I think, you know, there's a lot of problems with that part you know the yeah. freedom of speech you know there's a lot of stuffing uh, it out stuff and yeah and you know people getting what any little thing they say you know they're just like yeah. pretty much ruining their careers 
how do you deal with that? Because you're doing pretty much everything that kind of touch free on a speech, like books, like a, music, it's like a comedy. Free temple, yeah. Well, we yeah. just got jumped a couple of weeks ago. I had an issue with, there's these old guys that are neighbors and they keep wearing the MAGA hats around. I don't mm. know what your politics are, but my politics are not that. Mm-hmm. And I see that as fascism. I see it as them rubbing racism in my face. Gotcha. So the, and they're, they're, they're old guys. And essentially now they're just harmless, you know. But it just infuriates <laughs> me because they know my politics. And they keep coming into my store. And they're rude to people with those hats on, oh, matching, God. you know. And it's like I try really hard to have, a, like I said earlier, that safe environment. And when two old white dudes are in there rolling around with their MAGA hats, it makes my clientele, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, of course. Right. So a couple of weeks ago, I they came in the store and they were doing that stuff. So I wrote a note on the door that said, fuck Trump, fuck Trump, fuck Trump. So I typed it out, it's about that big. <laughs> and then it said, if you're still if you're still believing this dude, you're a fucking idiot, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's basically what it was. I left it there so when they left, they could see it. You know, so that, this is at, this is at like six o'clock or five o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. So they saw it when they left, and I'm like, "Yeah, there you go, right, you right, go, guys, I got you." Uh, I, I got with, the with my passive out. aggressive note, you know, my aggressive passive note, right, right, yeah, right, right. the opposite. Yeah. So then I got to thinking about it. I'm like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, dude." Then just wrote a little diatribe about that long about fuck you. I don't need your business. Why would you want to come to a bookstore if you fucking believe in Donald Trump? Blah blah blah. Right. There you go. Fuck you. And, uh, and then the next day, my buddy, one of my friends took a picture on Instagram of it and said, I love this coffee shop. And this was in the morning. And I don't show up at work. My partner doesn't show up at work until later in the afternoon. And he had called me and said, hey, you know, can you take that down? And I said, yeah, for sure, because of the fuck thing. You know, I got kids coming in. I'm like, you're right. right you're totally right. right. You know, I'm sorry. I apologize to him. And then two days later, like on a Friday, Somebody on the right had fucking gotten a hold of that picture oh, wow. and then shared it to all their fucking trolls. And then, boom, it was on like Donkey Kong for like literally 48 hours straight. We have, you know, 45 minutes of death threats we saved on the f- on, on our phone, our watched our numbers. And I know it sounds vain to talk about Google ratings and oh, Facebook gotcha. ratings, but we've spent six years really hard trying to do the right thing and build a really good following and to watch these guys just go. You know, calling us Nazis, calling us racist, calling us all the things that I hate, but throwing it back in our face. Gotcha. And then just re- you know, just tanking our Facebook ratings, oh, tanking no. our fucking Yelp and Google ratings. And it was just like, oh, my God, you know, and it was all on me. You know, gotcha. So I, I had to apologize to my partner, Matt, because we were just freaking out. Right. I didn't think it would snowball this way. Right. Yeah. You know, against right. me. You know? And that's what the only reason that I ask you, because it's, it's so... You have to be so careful right now with, with everything that you say because yeah. everything can be taken out of proportion and right. it'll take it on the wrong way, right. you know. And, and especially you, that you're dealing with books, music, yeah. and comedy, it's which all, is the, all the stuff they're coming after. Especially, next, you, know, yeah. you know, those when they're, the freedom of speech is so important, especially yeah. for co- comedy. You yeah. know, like comedy right. comics it, it's are like so open. Yeah, well, they're so open. I have a mind. long history with it. Way back, way back when when I first started doing zines. I had wrote, I had worked at a coffee shop downtown and wrote a disparaging uh, op-ed piece about the current governor at the time. He was a customer and he was a dick. (laughs) So I wrote a little piece of my zine, which was maybe a thousand distribution, (coughs) excuse me, about, you know, F this dude. I work at a coffee shop, didn't say what one, described the situation that happened and then said, fuck this guy, you know, I'm a fucking... I'm a right. barista. I make eight, you know, back then it was five eighty five an hour or something like that, you know. I don't need your shit, you know, <laughs> governor. And uh, one of the guys in my company apparently didn't like me and gave it to the owner of the company. Oh, no. And the owner of the company read it and said, Well, you have to fire this guy. You know, my my ex wife, my future ex wife at the time was uh, my boss. So he told her to fire me <sighs> because of what I wrote. Right. So I said, you know, I was fresh out of college. We were doing a lot of zine. You're like, like, hey, fuck, fuck that, that shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I wrote a letter to the Westward, wrote a letter to the Denver Post, wrote a letter to all the other zines that were going on in town and said, this is what happened and this is wrong and that violates my First Amendment right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I got, I got Patty Calhoun from the Westward wrote a great piece about it. It was awesome. It, get me, it changed my life forever, her noticing something like this was going on. She's an amazing woman. She's another good one you should interview. She's amazing. Nice. And then, uh, you know, the governor got questioned about it. Like, why would you be addicted to this poor barista guy? He's like, I'm sorry that man lost his job. And 
So then we had to go meet. I filed for unemployment. It's like screw that. You know, right. You're paying me if you're doing that. So I filed for unemployment, and we went to the office. And of course, he didn't show up, but he was there by phone. And then the 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 investigator described what happened. And then he goes, "All right, you know, ask my boss. Do you know what the First Amendment is?" <laughs> and my boss said, "Well." To be honest, I don't. I'm not really sure which oh, one that no. one is. Oh, so my then, God. The, but the investigator said, "Well, this is what it, this is what it is, and this is exactly why you cannot fire this man. <laughs> you, know, you violated the First Amendment, mm. you know, and fired me. And it was very empowering, very empowering to see the power of words, the power of these things. You know, it was like my first little taste using my English degree, my writing degree. Nice. You know? yeah. So it felt really great to do that, you know, and and be you know backed up by by that. It's not so, a, it's so it's not been a an important thing for me all along, you know. And the letter that I wrote on the door was, I mean, it was carefully worded, you know. It wasn't that I didn't want, you know, I didn't want your politics in here. Right. And your politics, I, I can ban people for politics. You know, this is a non mega hat club. Right. Right. You know? right. You got a hat on. You, you can't <laughs> yeah. come in this club, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it was careful on that. So and, and and the people that attacked us back, I have some screenshots. Some uh, uh, amazingly weird, terrifying people. You know, oh, no. Christian gun owner father, that kind uh, of stuff. He hit all the checks, huh? right? And people from all over the world, New Zealand, all these people would give us death threats and things yeah. like that just for this note that I wrote. Did you take it serious? Did you take the uh, serious? At first, the first one you take kind of serious. Then you're like, oh, man, come on. <laughs> okay, New yeah. Zealand, yeah, get your ass yeah, over here. None of these guys. I mean, we have caller ID. You know, that's <laughs> the funniest thing. So it's like this guy that kept calling back and doing like uh, like slash, like slasher sounds. You know, we have his number on caller ID. You know, we saved everybody's <laughs> phone number. We saved every disparaging email and all that. We we've saved it all. You know, so yeah. at some point there will be a fury of le of left wingness <laughs> unleashed upon these people, yeah. but not right now. It, We're it, gonna it, save it's, it. it's not that, your your story sounds like D. Snyder back in the yeah yeah. <laughs> even the, like, the PMRC <laughs> hearings were yeah. huge when I was growing up. I still have the Frank Zappa record from all those where he does that. Yeah. It was a really big deal. I had the the whole poster in my room in college. For yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the but the, the the sacredness of that First Amendment is that you know I can't hide behind that because I wrote those things. Right. And the grief that got thrown back on me and my staff, which I feel horrible about, is because... Because of you. Yeah, and, and it's you the could reaction, to right. And that, I mean, is their right, right, that is their right to say that. Yeah. Right. You you, know, you so, so the repercussions of what you say... You are know, still there. Right. So, yeah, you, so you can say what you want, but somebody's going to come punch, yeah. you, punch you in the head. Not so you, you, know, <laughs> you have to own it. You right, have to own right, it and right. just deal with it. Right. Um, in, in This is like, it's crazy that... We're seeing like right now what's going on in the country. We're seeing from both sides, yeah. you know, from left or right, yeah. how the censorship is happening now. Because right. I hear a lot of co uh, comics stories, you know, where right. like they censorship yeah. from the left. Yeah, and left you, is very oh, yeah. sensory yeah. right now. Yeah, without a doubt. The most prior to this right wing trolling incident, most of my bullies have all been from the left. Yeah, and it's like that. I'm not left enough, or. I carry World War II history books. You know? <laughs> oh, God. You know, it's oh like, my God. Like to see Ad Adolf Hitler's name offends you so much that you want me to pull all those books oh, off the Jesus. shelf. Oh, Jesus. History. Which, They're right, trying to hide history. Which makes you a denier. Yeah. You Jesus. know, which makes you the worst of the worst. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But you, but anyone that tries to take knowledge away. You've given yeah. a truth, and books books contain truth. And you had to learn from history so that way right. we don't repeat right. it, right. you know? Don't really, repeat history. Yeah. yeah. Which is, it seems like we're not doing that well. <laughs> no, no, totally not. Let's hope that this is a blip, a four-year blip that we never forget. <laughs> that we never ever forget. Right? You've Anybody given that a, annoys us, we just put a red fucking wig on their heads. You know. You've given a good example, my man, about a uh, a customer coming in. They had something they were wearing, and you kind of said, "Not here." Have you ever had an invited guest, like someone reading poetry, somebody singing a song, a comedian saying something? Where you felt like, okay, I brought you in, but you're going too far. Oh, or, yeah. or did something yep. offend you that you invited? For sure, without a doubt. I've done it. I've probably done it more than once. <laughs> <laughs> but one that comes to mind right off the bat is when we first opened Three Kings, there was a poet that I kind of got to know. I love the drunken poets, you know, those old guys. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to know him, and, you know, he's an all right guy, and he had this whole crazy history, and we kind of bonded. 
And then he, you know, he had this idea where he goes, oh, "How about we, you know, we have a, I have a guy that DJs, and then I read some of my poetry." This guy's like sixty something, so he's like old, old, old poet. And his friend was this young DJ looking kid. You know, this is <laughs> this is thirteen years ago, so he had, he had the look. You know, I was right. I was like, "All right." You felt and my safe. idea was like you know, uh, Burroughs had done stuff with some bands that were like you know him talking and the cool you know beat poetry and like the Steve Allen and Jack Kerouac tapes nice. and stuff like that. That's what I had in my head. Yeah. What it ended up being was the, the <laughs> DJ kid brought some crazy weird loop that just went on forever. Uh -oh. And then the, the, t the old guy that was my friend at the time basically was reading his diary kind of stuff, like anything he'd ever written. Uh -huh. Like they were racing through. They each had a, you know notebooks like that. Like they were going to read the whole fucking notebooks, you know? And I'm listening to him, and he's like, just going off about how much he hates women and fuck women. What the? And I'm like, holy, <laughs> holy, dude. You know, because he had just been droning on. I hadn't paid too much attention. I went back and listened. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so what I had done was I kept the monitor blowing at them. So they, right. they, were, they could only hear themselves and the and themselves talking. Right. And then took the overhead stereo system and then just blew everything else out until they were done. Gotcha. So and then I've been really careful. I'm, wow. I'm really you didn't wow. get it. It's too progressive for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's so that insane. one was like, that was a crazy one. Yeah. yeah. There was another one, I think. Oh, but another time was like, when I was managing the Ogden Theater, it was right after 9-11, and we had a band book called Burning Airlines. Uh. You know, and, they, and they'd been named Burning <laughs> Airlines for five years prior to... To 9 uh, To the yeah. sensitivity, right. right. But so convenience had, named yeah. at that time, right? So we had people protesting there, showed up, they were going to, you know, show us. Poor guys are like, we had this copyrighted yeah, like, five years ago. Yeah, they're they're like, like, they were like a Midwest emo band. You know, they were not evil. They were, I mean, we're, we're singing they were about kids. Lonely Love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like you don't like dragons and, and ponies? <laughs> right, that's hell? exactly it. Yeah. So, I mean, there was, there was that. I've had a few. There's been a few. Watching people go through it, it sucks. I mean, but freedom of speech is important. Right. But you also got to be careful. You know, now yeah. it's like, now the, you know, when I came up through, Music. There was, you know, there was skinheads, but there was like twenty of them, and we knew what they looked like and where they were. You <laughs> yeah, know? where to so, find them? Right. If so you, all the punk rock people just avoided them. You know? Right. Yeah. And then there was a, a big uh, uh, a cop shooting here that was skinhead involved, and after that, all the guys grew their hair out. <laughs> so, the, so, they grew, so they grew their hair out. Right. <laughs> they were skinheads, the, but they weren't right. dumb. Nope. Because the police, the, the police chief at the time said, if the, gave all the cops, and this is you can you can look it up. Told the cops that if you see a skinhead, you could beat the shit out of him. Wow. So literally, like, within three weeks, all his hair started growing <laughs> back, you know. And then uh, we just, I haven't done with it. I really thought that as a society, as an underground culture, as <laughs> rational human beings in the last 30 years, we eliminated the idea of Nazis. Right. Oh, no. That's ridiculous. I, that that is to now that we can even think that this is a thing, this is a this is an issue that I have to talk with that you guys weren't even born when I was dealing with it the yeah. first time. Right. That we still have to talk about it. Absolutely infuriating. Right. But it, it's, it's a reality. I mean, I if you think about it, it like is. a Germany is still dealing with it, right. and Germany is the one that right pretty that much had created that issue. Yeah. yeah so still they're suffering. still dealing with this one, and they have like very strict rules about yeah. like you know that shit. You can even have like a Slayer. T-shirt right. in Germany because they think that as, as the S of a Slayer is like a, the SSS. Right. Uh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. From, gotcha. Um, and, and it's a big deal over there. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. But even then, they're still dealing with this crap. So, I mean, I, I don't really surprise about there is still a six a, existing up there. You know, right, they're still right. over well, there. I guess the, to have the, uh, to, I mean, if they were there all along then. That's what we're kind of saying. But right. to have the courage to come out and speak to 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 share your your yeah. bio with us now. Do you think? Because you know, eight it... years during Obama, everybody kept their mouth shut. You right. know, yeah. we didn't have problems with that. We didn't have this crazy racist cells. And... Right. But do you think right. maybe is the the we didn't hear about it just more like because. Uh, media yeah. they make a noise about it yeah possibly because now it's you know, all, it's, it's, I, I know it's always been there there's, there's been some, like there's, the idaho compounds there's and, so many factors yeah. Yeah. there's it's not just one factor it's got to be so right many right factors. yeah there has to be a lot of things but i'm saying is like it is not gone hasn't been been gone it's like it's been always there right it just right. we now listen we're hearing more because media is paying more attention right. now there's a light shining on it yeah right. uh, but it's always been there you know, and I'm not saying that's okay. I'm saying it's just 
is it is what it is you know yeah. it's still there so we had to just make sure we keep you know we deal with them right. um do you think what do you do in a personal way in a business way i guess to fight the stuff you know? I, i literally do that fight it yeah, fight yeah. It literally. people need to know that is it going to be worth your time coming down here you know is it going to be worth your time to come down here right. and there's a lot of sober looking dudes like me that come and hang out or down there <laughs> that shop a lot of dudes that i hang out with i mean we got a long history in the denver punk rock scene the rock scene right you name it so if you come down there and mess with me you're going to come down there and mess with a whole mess of crazy uh, motherfuckers gotcha yeah. Yeah. you know and it's like it's weird to say at the bookstore but we are the world's most dangerous bookstore <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of like you know but mainly what i've done is surround myself with good people you nice. know if the people that are around you if you have any hesitation about this person being you know leading that far right you know nazi right let me know get it get it out of your life right you know and i've you know made sure if i see kids running with the wrong crew you know it's like hey dude you know Come don't here. do that right and this right. is a, this is the spot so if i end up booking you know liberal bands and liberal artists and liberal comedians and liberal that you know how how well com, do you, how com, well do you handle the opposite like so you gave an example of someone that had something that really bugged you but how tolerant are you to like someone that might be right but not not shockingly right just comfortably right but not bothering you yeah. are you okay with that Mostly, end of it? i guess yeah i guess it's a situation you know? it, it depends right, right. Yeah, it depends yeah. um i was also curious about um like items themselves man so so we go from like quote unquote dangerous hitler books which aren't right. but i'm mocking right. the situation right. do you have what is the craziest book that has gone through your bookstore the craziest comic maybe the the one you've sold for the most maybe the painting that's sold for the most things like that unique items yeah maybe vinyl record that's like lots sh of, shouldn't lots, have been there lots, but it arrived lots, you know? uh, one i got uh, this, when we first opened uh a, f a good friend for the music business he was uh liquid you know that whole getting rid of everything in life and gotcha hit the road with a guitar and, <laughs> and i'm done right yeah you know so he had an amazing amazing book collection i'm telling you like if If you know, I mean, voodoo books, Freemason books, uh, Rosicrucian texts. Wow. I mean, li like, literally, he gave me 30 boxes of books, and I went through the whole thing, and I got one book that, that was a double that had the ripped up cover. Everything else was just cherry. I'm telling you, like, you know, I, I have a copy at home, but it's a, ma a book of, about the history of magic. This big, you know, Jesus. that wide, that thick. I mean, just beautiful stuff like that for free. Oh, Jesus. Just gave it to us. So in going through that, he said that there was one book in there. He goes, maybe you'll find it, but it vibrates. You know, I bought it at this voodoo bookstore down in New Orleans, and I've been to that store, so I mean, I know, I know the store. And uh, he goes, you know, he kept telling me about this book to vibrate. So I'm like, whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed for almost 20 hours going through this collection because it was just amazing stuff. You know, a lot of it's still in my personal stuff, but. Going through it, he also gave me a huge art collection too. But going through it, and I pick up one book, man. I'm telling you, look, I get goosebumps telling it. I can feel it vibrating, and it was a, a Rosicrucian text translation thing. So it's like, Jesus. you know, beyond Freemason stuff. And I'm like, oh man, no way! It's, it can't be. You know, my fingers are tingling right now thinking mm -hmm. about it. So I put it aside, and he showed up a couple of weeks later, and I said, hey, dude. I pulled it out. And I go, is this the book? And he's like, yep, that's the <laughs> book, man. He goes, my mom, his, his mom was super Christian. And uh, she picked it up, put it down right away, said she should get rid of that evil. Gotcha. But, yeah. but there's like really good books, actually. Yeah. Those are sort of really interesting books. Yeah, yeah. Do you take the batteries off? No, I'm just kidding. He's <laughs> 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 no, like, it was actually a vibrator <laughs> that looked like a book. I don't know, but they, they are actually really interesting books. Yeah. Actually, I do have actually yeah, a crazy book cool band. stuff. Yeah. Nice. So I ended up, I gave, I gave that to a friend that's done a lot with the, a lot of research on Freemason stuff and things mm. like that. Gotcha. And comics, some of the coolest comics. Comics, man, um, that's been a weird one because it's like, I love them. I'm a rabid collector. But the one, it's like New Mutants 98 right now. Right. That's, the, that's Deadpool's first appearance. And that was the one that's fun now because it's you know it's the early 90s right so when i'm going through when we're going through collections we're always looking for that you know if you start to see new mutants run you're like oh uh, uh, 88, uh. 89, <laughs> 90, you know? so that yeah. one's always fun and i i'm a rabid collector of underground super underground offensive literature stuff gotcha so uh i just put a bunch on our website but i also just bought the stuff called tijuana bibles have you heard of these uh, -uh. The tijuana bibles from the 30s 40s and 50s you could get them down in Tijuana or Matamoros. And they're, what they were, they were sold to soldiers and stuff like that. They were down there on leave. 
So they're like about this big. They were hand, you know hand copied and just you know like it'll be Dick Tracy on the cover uh -huh. or Lil Abner or whatever. Betty Boop. Yeah, Is Betty that the Boop sexual sure. ones? Oh yeah. Oh, then I you, can see him. Then you open him up, and it's like Dick Tracy with a huge boner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, seen ben, Betty Boop riding the boner <laughs> around. It's just like over the top offensive. Yeah, I see. You him. know, so I, I just bought a collection that are like probably from the early fifties. Gotcha. Yeah. So those are ones I've been going through and taking some pictures of. <laughs> so th and for me, with the zine culture, that those are the beginning of zines. You know, those are like because there's some talk of some maybe some of the artists might have been some early American art artists. You know, like right. You know, right. Maybe Chrome, you know, who knows? <laughs> so you want to come across those. But these guys risked life and limb to sell you pictures of dicks. You know? Right, Because, yeah. you know, Mexico at the time, very... Conservative. Yeah, very Catholic yeah. culture. Yeah. No way would that be accepted. And in America, at no point, I mean, I'm still... I mean, you just couldn't print that out. You couldn't... There wasn't Kinko's. Gotcha. Yeah, you, know, you had to go to a printer. And like some of the early uh, underground comics from the 60s, these guys broke into print shops late at night and ran stuff <laughs> off to you know to make sure that you could have... You right. know, a, a boner? A giant make boner, sure, yeah. yeah exactly. A huge oversized boner. You know? <laughs> what's cool. what's uh, when it comes to vinyl, uh, vinyls, uh, what's the most beautiful thing you have in your the collection? One, the, the one I have in my collection... I collect, I'm a big Elvis fan, so oh, I yes. collect a lot of Elvis stuff. So the Elvis things, I have some great Elvis records I love. Well, the, I the got it from my grandma. And they're just like, they're not special as far as the music, you know, but it's the whole story. But, and but how many times I've listened to yeah. them. What's the one that you sell for? Like, what's the, the Jeez, coolest man. one that you, have, you sell for? God, but recently, we just, oh, well, speaking of Slayer, we just got one recently in stock from, this, it was a bootleg one that we can't even advertise online because slayer knows it exists uh, and hates it oh. so we can't we can't sell it on discogs we can't sell it anywhere we can only sell it in the store so Sweet. people could run into it but you right. can't promote it right i can't gotcha. i can't promote that record that is available so Damn. so go get this uh, yeah. <laughs> go get this mysterious yeah. record I'm, so bootlegs i love that's the stuff that's special i just still have that shit over there i'm <laughs> gonna go i'll roll. take a look when i get back <laughs> <laughs> I'll, i gotta see you tomorrow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy good stuff like that so the records that books we have a first edition of uh Uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And right Ooh. now it's like, I have it priced a little higher than I should because I don't ever want to sell it. Nice. That's I a like good having tactic. It. It's beautiful to hold. And it's it's, it's awesome. a win win, right? Yeah. So if you sell it, and people cool, come but... in. Like, I want, I want Johnny Depp to come in and pay too much for it. You know? <laughs> that's a good idea. And some really stuff. Feels cool for it. Yeah, my partner, Matt, because I'm a hoarder. I mean, obviously you can tell. I mean, it's, I mean all, the, all the stuff that I have in there, I have my own personal collection of. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then when we open the shop, I dumped. Tons of my books, lots of my records. I called my whole record and comic book collection so I could make some money. Gotcha. So uh, Matt, Matt, my partner who I love with all my heart, I couldn't do this without him, says, uh, you know, what you have to remember is that you own it for a while now. You know, uh, as the company, I own this first edition, <laughs> Fear and Loathing. It's right. okay for me to sell it because right. at one time, I did have it, you know, and, and I made some money off of it. So that attitude's really started. Uh, I, have a, I have a new baby. She's four months old. So that's the last four Sorry. or five months. It's been, thanks. It's, the last four months has been getting that attitude from Matt. You're right. disconnecting yourself. Right. He's, you know, becoming, he's becoming an adult I mean, yeah, the last four months. It, it, it took me until 52 years old to become an adult. Mm -hmm. Cool. But even then, I, I hesitate to call myself that. I got you. Yeah. I, I feel you, man. <laughs> I, I have my babies upstairs yeah. and... Hey, when my baby was born, I was like, nah, I'm not selling them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it works on overtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a way. Yeah, yeah, like, we'll find a way. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So this kind of thing usually, like, like comic loving, music loving, books, uh, thinking that you want a business, a lot of this comes down from family, man. Is your Did your family get you into this or were you, because like you No, I rebelled story. against all that. I mean, my mom was a teacher and she's a fantastic woman. I admire her. My dad worked for John's Manville for years. He was, a, he was also a teacher, you know, and they wanted me to be in the business life, you know, and that's what they thought that's what I would be best at. So, you know, I didn't click with that. I discovered rock and roll early and it just kind of changed everything for me. So, but I did, most everything I did was, kind of against them gotcha you know they were into, my dad even apologized years ago 
years ago because he'd given me shit about not making, I have no talent as a musician. I'll oh, never make any money. Gotcha. And it's like, he's right. You know, I have no talent as a musician, but I have talent with musicians, you know, and I've made a career. I've paid all my bills off of rock and roll or entertainment for the last 25 years. So you you're were both still, right. Yeah, and you're yeah. still involved with music. That's, oh, yeah. yeah. That's, I pay all my bills off entertainment. Yeah. I, pop I, culture. I'm, I'm 30. Oh, I don't even know. You're 34. Just a puppy. Just a puppy. <laughs> I'm 34 now. I was like, in, I kind of came to the, you know, the same realization of like, oh, I'm not a musician, yeah. you know? but I want to be involved with yeah. music, you know? And I think, I mean, we play some role in the, in the no, it's, war, you know? I think it's what like, we do is super important. It's yeah. a machine. And, and a lot of times, yeah. you know, people, you know, like, I know it sounds stupid, but bands need fans, like legit ones, Absolutely. you know, honest fans. Absolutely. And with, you know, everything that I do, It's mainly somebody, just a creative person that has a little low self-esteem coming up and going, hey, you know, I drew this. What do you think? You know, one, it takes, like, with that, music, too. It's a, I, I won't listen to If somebody gives me a CD, I don't listen to it in front of them. I'd never do that because that's, you know, it's right. really uncomfortable for me. Right. You know? I don't blame you. Yeah. Because right? a lot of times I really like the person. Oh, you know, and I don't, I maybe I'm not, you know, the music's not what I enjoy. But... Yeah. When people come up to you, they just want somebody to go, yeah, man, keep it up. Right, Fuck pat yeah, on the back. You know, this good. song might not be the one, but it's like it's that whole thing, and this painting might not be the one. And people remember that stuff, and it's like I've been doing it a long time now, and people come back and tell me. It's really gratifying to know that somebody actually listened to you at one point Very and nice. said, well, it was really nice that you said you know, that my painting looked nice. And then I went out and painted four more and made... You know, 30 grand, you know, that kind of stuff. That's nice. that's what I like to hear. We've, yeah. we've talked about it. We've talked about adjusting dreams and like what you're kind of touching on it in your personal life. And what we've kind of encouraged people to do is like, you might not be the musician. Right. You might not. And there's nothing wrong with adjusting the dream. Right. We're, we're all in a machine. You oil the machine and we all play a part. Right. Just don't yeah. stop dreaming. Don't stop dreaming. Yeah. Right. There's actually a cool story that uh, kind of got involved somehow. I don't know how I ended there, but I have uh, friends from the radio station. They're making these awards. It's called the Radio Latina Awards. And they uh, giving awards to the local bands. It's just local. So in order to be nominated to the awards, you have to be local. from Colorado. Nice. Yeah. Who's doing this? Uh, it's a it's a online, Latino, Latino online radio. radio station. It's called the Radio Latina. Wow. And they're doing it here on the, at the church, um, the the bar, the club, yeah. the church. And they're doing it over there. They're doing it on May 15. Wow. And they're going to just give it awards to the local. You know, they're not making any money. I'm not sure how much, if they're making any money at they're, all. They're it might even yeah. cost them, honestly. Yeah, it yeah. costs yeah, them. Exactly. Because that's what they told me. You know, I had it there here in the, in the, in the other podcast, and they were like, no, you, we're just doing it because we're, we're going to give it an award to the local musicians. You know, the, that's the, awesome. the one they trying you know and you'll see stuff come out of that i mean the bands if maybe it won't be that band that wins the award but it'll be the guitarist or singer from that band that goes on further and further because somebody just said you know what that's great that's yeah. Bad, yeah it gives me some hope yeah. at least you know because the music industry is so hard it's so it's, difficult it's, it's, like there's it's so like there's the two paths there's the incredibly lucky And then the hard work that hopefully pays off in your, in your 40s or whatever. You know? <laughs> But, you know, all, at the base of it, you all have to have a song. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I find it fat. I've, like, worked in the, at record stores and in live stuff. It exists. It, do, it doesn't exist. You know, we sell it as a commodity. You can buy a ticket to hear it performed. Or you can buy a, a recording of a performance of it. Right. But it's one of the only industries that just exists with, out of the thin air. Gotcha. You know, it doesn't exist until somebody plays a song. Right. Yeah. It doesn't exist. You know, painting exists. A book exists. Words on paper exist. But music doesn't really exist. And, until you, yeah. Until you go. Very true. And yeah. the, the best way, the best way to experience it is you have to go see it live. And, they, and people don't realize, you know, they, these musicians, these bands are working so many hours behind, you know, so many hours uh, practicing, you know, in, in the in the studio and and a lot of the times they have families they have jobs yes. you know and they have so to, it's extra time they're putting it's every uh, all their energy everything that's left inside of them is put out and put put into what they're doing that's the yeah. pa the passion work the extra yep. work the the unpaid work is the yeah. passion work yeah 
Well, it's really nice that, that you're doing all that, the promoting local artists, you know, even, Absolutely. you know, and, and all the styles, comedy, books, and yeah, musicians. We really appreciate that. I mean, personally, because I really have a big ass connection with metal and rock. Yeah, as yeah. you can see, yeah, yeah, study I I as, as I'm a big fan of rock and metal. Yeah. And I really appreciate anyone who promotes, you know, musicians. That's to me, it's a, a big, big deal for yeah. me. Well, so, I love it. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, from, <laughs> it's my pleasure, believe me. It's yeah. my pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, tell us where they can find your store, where they can find you online, you everything. Bet. We're at 2 South Broadway. It's Broadway and Ellsworth. It's at the dead center of Denver. It's 0000. It's all the addresses there. So, <laughs> 2 South Broadway. You can't miss it. We're open from 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. on weekdays until 3 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. I'd, and hopefully we'll be going 24 hours in a couple of weeks on the weekend. So we'll go from Thursday night to Sunday night straight through and just go great. with it. Very nice. And then online, we're at mutinyinfocafe.com. And f through there, you can get connections to our social media, all our shop sites. We, we sell, we have a huge collection of comic books online, a huge collection of amazing, cool books online. And I... And, you know, new and used on both, and then vinyl. I got a lot of vinyl online. Very too. nice. Sweet. So that's what we've just been kind of building. Bands, if they if they want to, if they bands, just sing. contact me at rev dot o n e two six at gmail dot com. Very nice, Sweet. my man, Jim. Thank you, my man. That was way cool. You, it's been my a pleasure. pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. Thanks, man. Thank Definitely. You. And where they can find us? They could find us at the Concoction Podcast. That's Facebook. That's Instagram. The Concoction One on Twitter. And you you could watch yourself in a few days on YouTube we'll at the Concoction we'll, Podcast. We'll share it on all over all, all our social media. Absolutely, yeah, man. absolutely. Cool. Yeah, to my like my friend say this episode will be ready will be available actually not ready. Ooh, right. Ooh, ready. <laughs> what am I talking about? This is the beer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be available in all the uh, platforms: Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes, and and YouTube will be in video in the next um, few days. Few days. Yeah. yeah. We, we we need to make sure that we look pretty in the right, video. Right, so yeah. <laughs> delete anything stupid. I say. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good. We don't delete anything you say. <laughs> we just make sure you look pretty. Okay, <laughs> we edit from this point up. Yeah, <laughs> we don't change your words. Yeah. So okay, follow good. us and subscribe to our channel, the Concussion Podcast. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys later.